Welcome to Learn Sibelius 6 in one hour. You can download a PDF of the Eroica score that we'll copy in this course from my website www.composerhome.com. If you want, you can also download catch-up files which allow you to jump straight into any individual lesson. And now there's an ebook for you to download to your PC, Mac or mobile device from www.amazon.com. Just search for Learn Sibelius. In this lesson we're going to learn about step time note entry in Sibelius. So far if you've done all of the lessons you've put in the two opening chords of Beethoven's Eroica and you've also put in the cello melody using real time entry or flexi time. We're going to play that back now so that we can just see how far we've got. Now you can click this button to take the playback line to the start or you can press the shortcut which is shown as command and left square bracket or control and left square bracket if you're on a PC. You can press play or use the space bar to play. You can also use the spacebar to stop play and you can use what we're learning as our best friend, the escape key, to stop playback too. Now when we learn step time we need to know a lot, a lot more about the keypad. So far we've been clicking on the keypad which is usually found at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If we've needed a crotchet or a quarter note we've just clicked on it and then we've clicked on the score to create the crotchet in the position that we need it. Well, what we're going to learn now is that there are shortcuts for the keypad in Sibelius aligned to the numerical keypad on your computer keyboard. So here I've overlaid a computer keyboard over the keypad. I'll cut off the rest of it and you'll see that the numerical keypad on the right exactly fits over Sibelius's keypad. If I put them side by side like that you can see that for instance if I press the number 4 on the numerical keypad I would be able to get the crotchet on Sibelius's keypad. So it's great for quickly getting access to the note lengths and accidentals um, and articulations that you need most often. Let's start putting some music in like that. I'm going to zoom in on the music and we're going to put in the violin part. The first thing I'm going to choose is the quaver on the keypad which aligns with the number 3 on my numerical keypad on my keyboard. As soon as I press the number 3 you could see a quavers appear at the start of the bar. Now I'm going to press 0 on the numerical keypad which aligns with the rest on the Sibelius keypad and you can see now that the first quaver has been input and there's a blue carré straight after it showing me I'm ready to put the next note in. Now I've chosen a crotchet and I'm actually going to play the pitch G on my MIDI keyboard. Now I've put it in the wrong octave so I can quickly flip it up to the right octave with the shortcuts CONTROL or COMMAND and UP or DOWN arrow which allows me to quickly change octave. Now I've still got crotchet selected so if I keep on playing the G pitch it will allow me to keep on putting the note and it always goes after that blue carry that you can see there. It even allowed me to cr put a crotchet over the bar um, and turned it into two tied quavers. Now I've just gone a little bit too far here. I've put another crotchet in and it's turned into two tied quavers at the end of that bar but it's actually supposed to be a tied G quaver to a dotted minim in the next bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my other best friend in Sibelius here. I'm going to use undo because I didn't mean that note to happen uh, which of course is control and Z or command and Z on a Mac. That's undo. So what I need to do now is I need to put a quaver in here at the end of the bar and then add a tie to it. So number three on the keypad is the quaver so I'm going to select that and I'm going to play the pitch of G again. And now I'm going to press the tie button which you can see aligns with the enter button on the numerical keypad on my computer. There we go I've added the tie. Now I need to change to a dotted minim so that's going to be a combination of number 5 which aligns with a minim and the dot at the bottom of the keypad not the dot at the top of the keypad which we've already learned is a staccato articulation mark. So once I've done uh, those two uh, numbers I can then just play my G again and um, I've already now created the first three bars in the violin part. Now as you learn where these notes are you're going to get very quick at doing this. I put in the next note. Ah, now the next note's supposed to be an A flat and I've mistakenly played A natural so I'll just undo and play the right note in. I'll add a tie with the enter key on the numerical keypad and then the next note is just a minim so I'll just type number 5 and then I need a crotchet so that's number 4 on the keypad and I can play all of those notes which are all crotchets without changing anything else and then I've got a run of quavers so I'll press number 3 on the keypad and play all of those pitches. 
Of course, the nice thing about step time entry is that you don't have to be a particularly good keyboard player because once you've set the note length, you can just play the notes in your own time. Suits me. So the very last note's a crotchet. I'll press number four to get a crotchet and play that last E flat. Now let's have go have a look in, at our um, phrase. I've got every single note, note length in there correctly. And of course, the only thing that I'm still missing is phrasing. We learned in the last lesson how to put in uh, phrasing. So I'll click on the first note that should have a phrase mark over it and press uh, S for slur and spacebar to space it out. And that's how quick it is to create music with step time.